Hello, this is Professor Bustley Booth. This video is an overview of the course project called Secret Shopper, which is your major deliverable for Business 101 Introduction to Business. So we will go over the learning outcomes for this project, the multi-stage nature of this project. I will briefly go over the role of peer reviews. There will be a separate video on how to do the peer reviews. I'll just merely go over the role here. And then I will specifically walk you through the first three steps. There will be another video on going over the last two steps. All right, so here are the learning outcomes, which are articulated in your syllabus. So student outcome number five is to create a marketing strategy for business. That's really kind of the outcome of what this project is about. And the vehicle is through the secret shopper activity. And then there is student outcome number six, which is using a variety of information sources specifically to describe the necessity of small business in the free enterprise system. And because this is a multi-phase project, let me go over the five stages. The first one is project 1A, where you will identify a small to medium-sized business to observe. This cannot be a large business like Macy's or Starbucks or Target or anything like that. It needs to be a small to medium-sized business. And you will also do uh, industry analysis to inform you the market space in which this business does its, its work. And that will be worth 15 points. And then Project 1B is a secret shopper prompts, or the outcome of that will be the secret shopper prompts. And that's worth 20 points. And then there's 1C, it's followed 1C, where you will develop then, or you will record and present the secret shopper observations. And that's worth 25 points. The fourth piece that you will then produce, having done all those three, is to produce project 1D, which will be a draft of your observations, your findings, and recommendations. And that will be worth 30 points. Ultimately, this will come together in your final uh, submission of the observations, findings, and recommendations, which is 50 points. All of these are going to be peer reviewed, so be prepared for that. I'll discuss that here in a moment. So another way to look at that, this, is to sort of imagine steps. And the reason why we're developing these in steps is so that you will ramp up to a high quality product that has uh, been developed not only through you know critical thinking but also have has benefited from peer review so again here the first part is that project 1a where your company uh, you will uh, you will present your company a choice and do preliminary industry analysis that is due in week five and that's worth 15 points that work will inform your secret shopper prompts which will be due week seven worth 20 points, and then that will inform your next stage, which is your secret shopper in observations. Having produced the prompts, you can now observe and report what your observations actually were. So these are your data points, and that comes around week eight. So you'll really need to sort of plan the next few weeks to make sure you can do this, and it's worth 25 points. And then it will, it will then you then will have the ability to draft observations, findings, and recommendations having done the three steps, right? Because you're not stepping up to the fourth deck where you're in week 10, you'll be able to produce a draft, which ultimately will become a final product in week 11 worth 50 points. And together, all of this is, our, is collectively 140 points or 14% of about 14% of your final grade and no small chunk of change. And remember that for each of these steps, you are getting peer reviews and also my comments so that you have the opportunity to develop a very strong and high quality professional product. All right, so here's the role of peer reviews. So after the, you know, the deadline, you will be assigned to anonymously review three submissions and you will use a rubric to review and there will be a different uh, video that walks you through that. Okay, you will have three days to complete the three reviews. And so just remember number three, you will have three days to complete three reviews. I'll again walk you over, you know, walk you through how to do that. 
in another video. And the intent really of the peer reviews is to help your peers improve their product along the way so that we don't arrive in a situation where, you, you know, you find yourself lost because you didn't really know if you were in the right direction in the first place. No, we're going to take this slowly, one step at a time. So by the time you get to the top, you will have produced a high quality product. And the secondary intent is to really expose you to the work of others in order to improve your own. Feedback I've gotten in the past is that students really like this because they find like they're guided through this process, um, you know, very closely and that they're producing a product they feel they can be very proud of. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to Canvas so that you have a chance to take a look at you know where are these project assignments so this is my instructional view of canvas and as you can see here you know there will be some menu items that are not accessible to you and that's okay and we're going to focus in on the modular elements here so we're already done with week one we're done with week two and now we're done with, we're in week three you know where are these projects well as you may recall the first one is due week five so you'll need to go to week five to find that. Well, it's right here, project 1A, company ID, industry analysis, and peer review. Just a note on this. If you are relying solely on the Canvas to-do list, you will find you will miss assignments because the Canvas to-do list only sort of stages the kinds of assignments that are due in the next few days. It doesn't list necessarily what's do two weeks from now so you'll need to go to your calendar to go and figure that out okay and have a time management system that accounts for things that are due way in advance and that takes a bit of time so we're in week three right now okay so you have time to be able to produce a quality product in week five assuming you're aware that it's there and that you are and you have been made aware of what's there and that you have uh, planned uh, attack to get this done. So you'll see it is due May 1st it's, uh, and it's worth 15 points. So then you click that and week five, right? And then here are the instructions. You can see, excuse me, let me drag the corner here if I can grab that. All right. And it'll tell you what the purpose is. Uh, this is a multi-stage project, right? And on project A, you'll focus your attention on the following, choosing a business to observe, um, understanding the products and services it offers, and just, you know, identifying the industry in which it does business, identifying the customers and their needs, and identifying the possible competitors. And here are those learning outcomes I talked about. And here are the directions. You choose a smaller, preferably local business to observe, apply and analyze certain concepts of this class. And I highly recommend you choose one that will, may benefit from your work. So. If you, um, you might want to act like a consultant and say, hey, I did a secret shopper for you. Might you be interested in what I found? Because a lot of the small businesses um, don't even think about getting a, a, a secret shopper because they're too busy to think about it. And you are actually helping them think through their business so that they can improve their customer service um, management. All right. So it says use this form to conduct your research. All right. And so I'm going to go ahead and preview that document here and um, you know magnify that so you can see it and all you're doing is following directions right you put your name you put your date you answer these questions which small business local business you are observing you're going to give it you know provide their name address phone number hours of operation website if it has one right in this area you identify the products and services of what it offers right here. Make sure you read everything here so you're following directions. And then it says, in what industry does the, uh, the business operate? And you're like, I don't know. Well, then you click this link. It'll take you to the Bureau of Labor Statistics that identifies, it'll say employment of major industry sector. We're really just interested in the in industry and its sectors, which is are listed here. Okay, there are other interesting information here you might wanna look to make sure you choose jobs. They're actually still gonna be around because this is projecting up to, you know, several years out, 2024 in this case. Um, at any rate, let's get back on track. Then you can look at the, uh, the major um, industries, and this says goods producing, excluding agriculture. And then there are the sectors within the industry of the good, goods producing, uh, excluding agricultural industry. 
right? So there's manufacturing, construction, mining. And then chances are that eight out of 10 of the businesses that are around here are going to be, you know, in the service industry. And here are the different sectors or sections of the service industry. And then here's the agricultural industry and, um, and, and uh, forestry, fishing and hunting. And chances are you're not necessarily going to be, you know, observing those. And so that brings up a point of making sure you actually choose a company you can secretly observe. So if you choose, do not choose a business that has, you know, um, doesn't really have a lobby for you to go and be sort of mingled with the rest of the customers, because then it's very difficult to be a detective when you're the only one there um, and there's really nothing very much for you to observe, like an accounting, you know, a single person accounting office. That's really not a good choice, but maybe a, a, maybe a small consulting firm where you can be in the lobby and pretend to be, you know, gating their services or something like that. You could do that. Okay. Um, and then, of course, then the fourth question, what is the target customer profile of business? You'll want to read that very carefully here. And uh, I just want to note this piece. It is not possible, and I've seen this often, you know, it's corrected, you know, that the, that the business is somehow targeting all age ranges, all genders, all household sizes, all income ranges, all edu No, no, they're not. Yes, they will accept the customers, any customer who comes through their doors, but they're not targeting necessarily all those customers. There is a particular customer profile that fits that business um, offering, and you'll want to be very specific in what it is. And if you just don't know, ask the manager or owner. They'll have a better sense of what that might be, all right? And then you'll want to identify who the likely competitors are. So that is project 1A. Just follow directions and you'll be fine. All right? I'm going to, excuse me, try to minimize this back. And then you'll submit that by the deadline. And then you'll review three of your peer submissions. And then you're good to go. Okay? And then there is project 1B. I'll go back to modules so you can find that. And um, and it, if you recall, I had said that it was were, uh, due week seven. So I'm now scrolling to week seven. And um, you'll find it right here. You should see, you can see week seven. Week seven, creating the human resource advantage. It's coming around that time. And it says here, project 1B is due May 22nd. And there, this is where you'll be producing the secret shopper prompts. And I'll just click that. So you can see the assignment in in your uh, particular canvas piece, uh, in your particular canvas view, student view, this may be locked and you may not be able to see it. But so because I don't want you to cherry pick and start completing segments, you know, out of order, they will become available. They will become live one to two weeks before they're due. So you don't have to worry about that. Just know that you are going to need to plan to you know, give yourself um, enough time, one to two weeks to put your mind around the things you need to get done um, for each of the stages. So this is week seven. Just note that now in your calendar. And that's project 1B. And again, like the other, it will describe what it is about, what it is for. And in this case, you are now going to be developing uh, the kinds of observation elements you will use to create data around. So first, and, and, and here are the categories, okay? And it's actually easier to see once you see the form itself. So you'll draft a secret shopper survey that you will use as a foundation for the final survey you will use to observe the chosen business. You will use this form. Uh, I've already launched it here and I'll show it to you in a moment. If you so choose, you can have multiple locations um, and you may ab ab observe up to three locations of the same business, not its competitors, and you can earn up to five extra credit points for each of those. And you don't get those points till the final stage. So you need to complete the project in order to earn the points. Okay. And so what I will do now is show you what it looks like if you were to go and you know, download that form. So this is what it looks like, an Excel spreadsheet. This is the template. Okay, I'll just scroll down real quick so you can see the whole thing. And you will notice 
that uh, there are two tabs, observation template and instructions. I'll click instructions so you can see. And in this case, you are developing the uh, prompts. So I gave you some examples of what prompts are. And you'll find here, go ahead and zoom that back out again, is that uh, if you're just doing one store, you'll need to note the time zone of that store, right? And then you'll write five observational prompts per category. And here's an example on the category of um, customer service, uh, first impressions. And so, for example, the parking lot is clean and free of debris. And I'm not going to discuss this right now. I just want you to focus in on this column because this is the pro this is P1B. Okay, the others are going to be P1C. So. Going back here in this category, customer service employee behaviors, a prompt, an observational prompt, associates greeted me by this amount of time. And you're like, how am I going to come up with these questions or uh, these prompts? Well, you can do some Google searches on the kinds of um, secret shopper questions that would come up when you go and you know perform a secret shopper activity. It's all over the web. So you'll have plenty of guidance there. And then here's a section on path to purchase. And here are examples. The item I wanted was available to purchase. There were a sufficient number of cashiers when I was ready to purchase. That is in the category path to purchase, right? And then, and a purchase, return policy, customer loyalty. Here's an example. The cashier explained the return policy and so on. And then I put in here, you'll need to have a prompt around the four Ps, product, price, access, which is place, okay, you know, the ability to find or get to a place quickly, um, also accessing pro uh, products in the quantity you desired, but I put access to business here, which is a, a point of clarity, and it's being a clarity, clarity of promotions, and then effectiveness of promotions, and so that's all you're doing for 1B is create, you know, coming up with these five prompts per category. Okay, let me go back to Canvas and go to 1C, the third uh, step of this multi-phase project. And I had said that would be in week eight. So we're going to come back here and go to week eight. And you'll find Project 1C, Secret Shopper observation, Observations. So these are the actual observations themselves, having completed the and gotten you know feedback from your peers on the form you are now going to be uh, doing you know recording the prompts the the uh, uh, the data points for prompts so here's one C all right and you'll see it's very much the same and why would it you're just not going to focus in on these in, in this column these these columns over here up of the instructions. So give you an example. All right. So you you will have filled column B and now you're working to put data points in these columns. Okay. Again, store A, store B, store C are three different locations during three different time zones. I mean if you go back to the same time, that's fine. They're just through three different locations. Uh, you know, time A for to store A time B for store B time C. So you just put the time that you were there. Make sure you identify a PM. And then you will start recording. Now the difference of other or Likert are listed here and at the bottom. So other are things like the number of employees, length of time, etc. Likert is really along the scale. The quality of observed element expressed along a Likert scale. You're like what's a Likert scale? It's right here. And so that's just a way to standardize what it is you're observing. Um, in this case, we're doing one through five, one being very poor, two poor, three acceptable, four good, five very good. So I'll just go over a couple examples here. So in the first one, under the category of customer service, first impressions, you may recall that I said the parking lot is clean and free of debris. When I observed that, I gave it a two. Why? Because I wrote notes. And by the way, for each of these row you will write notes you want to get full points so for example here's a note that's written here 
the parking lot uh, had a lot of shopping carts installed, making that spot unavailable unless the cart was moved. This is, by the way, a pet peeve of mine when I go to grocery stores. I can't, you know, they're <laughs> shopping carts installed. Like, please return them in their proper, um, you know, designated areas so we can park our cars and and not get our cars um, damaged by these things because they can just sort of roll away. At any rate, I gave that um, a two because it, you know, I consider it debris and not clean and tidy. Okay, and you look, what is a two? Well, a two here is poor. This is poor. Okay, if you're very poor, there will be other things that had occurred there, you know, a lot more dirt. In this case, that it was not, you know, not only full of shopping carts, but there was a lot of strewn um, garbage and things like that. All right. And so an example of when you would use the other column as well as the Likert in this case, like associates greeted me in this amount of time and five minutes. And then I then also uh, provided a quality score on the, the greeting itself. And then uh, and here are my notes. I could see that there were four employees as I entered the store. Two of them were chatting with each other. One was at the counter helping another customer. And if I keep going, one, excuse me, one was at the counter helping a customer. One was cleaning displays and eventually said hello after five minutes. And it's important to really write that because it will help your findings and your recommendations. Okay, so that's an example of one C. Let me go back to um, back to Canvas, and so there is also one D and one E. And this video will not go over that because uh, in this one that will be the second segment, which I'll, you I will, I will make available in a little bit uh, in a couple weeks, so that um, you will have rolled into the first three, and then you'll understand what to do with the last two. But suffice it to say. If you were to go into week 10, it's already there, Project 1D, although you can't open it yet because it's not yet live. And then you look at week 11 and uh, Project 1E, which is your final submission. And again, it's also peer reviewed. In that case, it's uh, due June 12th with 50 points. Okay, so to wrap this up, um, we went over the learning outcomes. Uh, a demonstrate or sort of graphical discussion of this multi-stage project development. I also briefly went over the role peer reviews and then walk you through the assignments projects 1A to project 1C in Canvas. I expect that you will go over this video several times when you, you know, feel like you might be a little lost. Go back to this video so that it will trigger your attention to the, some of the things that was discussed here and hopefully it will guide you through. And if you still are confused about what actually is expected of you, I want you to email me. I don't want you to be lost, at, you know, um, wondering what, why you're taking the steps that you're taking and what to do next. I want you to call so that I can help you. All right. Well, that is it for now. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video.